Hi, I'm Milan, and I'm a designer at the LEGO Group. So today we want to show you a really exciting new model we've been working on. One of the most iconic aircraft of all time it is, of course, the Concorde. My name is Zaki Ramon. I'm a Frenchman. And by chance, I was the last man on Earth to have been trained and qualified to fly the Concorde. Flying the Concorde was very different from other planes. Of course, the speed, that was what we call Mach 2, that is twice the speed of sound. And uh, the plane itself was a little bit uh, complicated, elaborate, so we had much work in the cockpit, but very speedy. For example, from uh, takeoff in Paris to landing in New York, that was three hours and 21 minutes. But it's not only the speed that makes Concorde remarkable, it's really the epitome of form following function. All these sleek flowing lines on Concorde that were necessary to help it slice through the sound barrier are what give it this amazing silhouette. One difference in the flight was that at our cruising altitude, which was around 55,000 feet, there was absolutely no turbulence and almost no wind, so the duration of the flight was always the same and no turbulence at all during the two hours of supersonic flight. That was a big comfort. <laughs> I think Concorde really represented a time in the late 60s and early 70s with this optimistic vision for the future. It really made us question what it was to, to travel and what the future would hold. And I think that's why the aircraft really holds a special place in people's hearts because it really inspired this optimistic vision of the future. So obviously it wasn't just the outside of Concorde that had this luxurious look. The whole experience of being inside the aircraft was luxurious. Uh, they got uh, luxury in drink and food, but um, the true luxury was the speed and also, I'd say, the service on board. It was very, very uh, luxury that you, you won't find anywhere else in an airplane. <laughs> and then, of course, probably the most famous part of Concorde, whether you know it for its supersonic speed or its luxury, the thing that most people remember about Concorde is it had a really weird nose. So we have this droop snoot at the front of the aircraft, which our element designer, Yoel, worked really hard on. Hi, I'm Yoel, and I'm a design master at the LEGO Group. For the LEGO Concorde, we designed two new elements. One of them is a cone that is being used for the nose of the plane and the tail of the plane. I'm really curious to see how our fans are going to use this new cone piece for their own amazing builds. As you know, the nose of the Concorde is uh, very uh, sharp, very long, and uh, of course, when you are like this, nose up in the final, the nose is so long that from the cockpit, we don't see the runway. So the engineers created a movable uh, nose, and for landing, and also for taxiing before takeoff, the nose would drop seven degrees for approach and for landing, 12 degrees. So there were three positions, cruise seven and 12 degrees down. And the second element is a type of visor or windscreen that is situated in the front of the plane on the nose and it's being used when the nose goes down. The droop snoot was really challenging for us because one of the things we wanted to capture was the dual windscreens. On the, on the Concorde, there is a cockpit windscreen and then there's a visor that goes in front of it for supersonic flight. And that visor actually tilts down with the nose of the aircraft. The biggest challenge on the design of the new visor was to really have it fit over the existing windscreen. And so with Milan, we've put in a lot of time into figuring out where the pivot point is for the whole nose while the nose is up and also looking great while the nose is down. The Concorde has a delta wing, what we call delta wing. This kind of wing is necessary uh, to fly supersonic. But the problem with this kind of wind is that it has uh, less uh, lift when you are flying small speed. That is when we are approaching 
are in final before landing. The Delta Wing of Concorde is perhaps one of its most iconic features. This Ojiva Delta Wing is the silhouette that everybody saw when they looked up and, and saw the, the aircraft flying overhead. And it's something that we really wanted to get right on the LEGO model. On the Ojiva Delta Wing, we've got the elevons, which are the control surfaces of the aircraft, and, and they move. They also frame these two huge engine houses, which are the, the powerhouse of Concorde, which contain four Olympus engines that would power its supersonic flight. Of course, we've represented those on the model as well, the most important part of the aircraft. So starting at the rear of the, of the aircraft, you have this long, sleek, pointed tail. And within that tail, we've included the little bumper wheel, which is a, a small wheel that folds out so that when the aircraft takes off, the tail doesn't hit the ground. Above that, you've got the vertical stabilizer. The rudder is a split rudder, so that's on the LEGO model as well. We've got the, the top and bottom rudders that can move independently. Moving forward, you have the cabin. We've got the little windows printed, but then also the interior space with chairs and bathrooms so you can remove the top and, and have a look at what's inside. We actually have axles running through the, the fuselage, which means that the front and rear landing gear are coupled. When you twist the tail, the main landing gear and the front landing gear fold down simultaneously and retract simultaneously. We were joking when we were designing it that this is probably the, the best looking LEGO model from underneath the model. And of course, that's the, the view that most people see the aircraft today in museums or when it was flying, you know, looking up and seeing that silhouette. Um, so we're really happy that we were able to capture that. Some people say that uh, at high altitude, you could see the curvature of the, of the Earth. So flying this plane was really a great experience and uh, I was lucky, so lucky to, to do that. But in fact, there was much work in it because the plane had a lot of circuits. It's, it's there. And, and for example, this was the checklist or do list that you had. You see, there is a lot of pages. As to another normal plane, you got one or two pages, no more. But everything always always something to, to do, to work in the plane. I think one of my favorite parts of the model is actually the stand. We worked really hard to create this aesthetic representing the kind of 60s and 70s. So it's like this folk wood and, and metal stand, but on the front we've included the Concorde logo, and then we've got this first flight, the cruising speed, and obviously the all important collaboration between uh, Britain and France in, in designing and making this aircraft. And the name Concorde actually means kind of agreement or harmony in, in both English and French. Hi, I'm Milan, and this is the fastest Lego aeroplane in the world. <laughs>